Good afternoon. Graduates, please be seated. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the spring 2022 commencement and hooding ceremony of the University of Memphis Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law. Before we begin, please take a moment to turn off or silence your cell phones. Thank you. Would everyone please now stand for the playing of the national anthem. <laughs> Welcome to this momentous event, an event that acknowledges and celebrates several years of very hard work by the 122 graduates who are graduating today to receive their academic hoods, having completed the requirements of the Juris Doctor degree. Today's graduates also include 11 students who are completing the requirements of the dual JD MBA degree. Additionally, there are 10 students receiving certificates in advocacy, 15 receiving certificates in business law, eight receiving certificates in health law, and eight receiving certificates in tax. We are privileged to have with us on the stage today several very distinguished university and law school officials, as well as several special guests. Each of these individuals will play an active role in today's ceremony. I have the great honor to recognize University of Memphis President, Dr. Bill Hargrave, the 13th president of our university, who will confer the degrees upon our graduates on behalf of the university. Professor Ralph Brazier, who is our commencement speaker and also co-professor of the year, will assist with hooding. Ed Brundick, immediate past president of the Cecil C. Humphreys Law Alumni Chapter, will be present to uh, present awards and announce the names of our graduates. The president of the Law School Student Bar Association, Candace Danielle Fong, will present the Adjunct and Professors of the Year Awards. And the class of 2022 speaker, Dardanius J.R. Coleman, Jr. I also would like to recognize Assistant Dean for Admissions, Recruiting, and Scholarships, Dr. Sue Ann McClellan, and Elizabeth Rudolph, who are serving as marshals at today's ceremonies. We appreciate everyone's participation in today's commencement ceremonies. Many members of our distinguished law faculty are also here to celebrate this milestone in the lives and careers of their students. I would like to recognize them. I will ask each faculty member to stand when I call your name and to remain standing until all faculty members have been introduced. And help me out because if you're not on my list, I can't see you very well with the lights. Linda Black, Demetria Frank, Ronnie Gibson, Deshaun Harris, Regina Hillman, D.R. Jones, Carrie Curley, Daniel Keel, 
Mary Morris, Danny Shafson, Nicole Tachinda, Anna Vescovo, and Jody Wilson. I now have the honor of introducing Ed Brundick, immediate past president of the Cecil C. Humphreys Law Alumni Chapter, to present the faculty awards. Good evening and congratulations to the University of Memphis Cecil C. Humphreys School of Law Class of 2022. I'm glad to recognize the outstanding contributions of Memphis Law faculty by presenting tonight's faculty awards. Please join me in welcoming Mr. John Babango and his daughter, Mary Lauren Babango Stewart, who are both dis distinguished alumni of our law school. Through the generosity of John's law firm, Ferris Babango, PLC, the Ferris Babango Faculty Scholarship Award was established in 2011. The award honors outstanding faculty scholarship. This year's winner of the Ferris Babango Faculty Scholarship Award is Professor Ronnie Gibson for his article, A Scene, A Regional Trade Pack Model for States in the Global South published in the Washington University Global Studies Law Review. Congratulations, Professor Gibson. Congratulations, Professor Gibson. The Patricia and Dan Mural Professionalism and Ethics Teaching Award honors the professor who most eff effectively incorporates creative and innovative methods for including ethics and professionalism in their teaching. This year's winner of the Patricia and Dan Mural Professionalism and Ethics Teaching Award is Professor D.R. Jones. Professor Jones, Professor Jones developed her privacy law course, course to include the uh, intentional and consistent coverage of ethics from a variety of professional lenses throughout the semester. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Professor Jones. Best packing job you've ever seen. Congratulations, Professor Jones. The MLK 50 Faculty Service Award was established to mark the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The award honors a faculty member that has demonstrated outstanding service to the University of Memphis, to the law school, the, legal, the Memphis legal community, or the broader national academic and legal communities. This year's winner of the MLK 50 Faculty Service Award is Professor Danny Schaffson.
Congratulations, Professor Shafson. Thank you, Mr. Brundick, and congratulations to the award winners and all of our law faculty for their outstanding accomplishments in the areas of teaching, research, and service throughout the year. Now, I am pleased to introduce Danielle Fong, president of the Student Bar Association, who will make brief remarks and introduce the recipients of the Professor and Adjunct of the Year Awards. Danielle is a native of Memphis and earned her undergraduate degree here at the University of Memphis. Please join me in welcoming Danielle Fung. Good evening, everyone, and I am honored to present the faculty member of the year award to, uh, it was a tie, so to first, uh, Professor Brazier. I'm going to keep it in the box. It's a really nice box. So, The next um, professor is Danny Shaftman. I'm also glad to present the Adjunct Professor Year of the Award, which is going to the Honorable Charles Pazar. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Danielle. And congratulations to Professors Brazier, Shafson, and Judge Pizar. It is now my privilege to introduce our commencement speaker, selected by the class of 2022, Professor Ralph Brazier. Please join me in welcoming Professor Brazier. Well, congratulations, class of 2022. Where are you? Okay. Here you are looking intelligent and wise. And despite what my sister would say, I don't think any of us has anything to be embarrassed about that we showed up at this important event wearing exactly the same outfit. <laughs> Today is your day. Soon you'll walk across this stage and receive your Juris Doctor Diploma. But first, you have to endure the very worst part of graduation. A speech by somebody who's far less wise and far less intelligent than you. As I was thinking about a theme for this speech, my always very supportive mother gave me this comforting advice. You know, honey, the theme doesn't really matter because nobody's going to be listening to you. <laughs> You're just a roadblock on the way to the main event. The only thing anybody wants to hear from you is how long you're going to be up there talking so they can figure out if they're going to take a long nap or a short nap. <laughs> Lawyers do like to talk. The typical law school graduation speech lasts just long enough to put everybody in a semi-catatonic stupor. Today, you may have time for a power nap, but I promise you, not much more time than that. And if you're not the napping type, then I suggest while I'm talking, you check your emails. Or, or even better, text about where you're going to dinner later today. 
Class, for three years, I've asked you to share with me your riveting revelations, your scintillating stories, and your titillating tales. But for the most part, you were completely unwilling to spill the tea. <laughs> so I have no choice but to reveal what I have independently gleaned about you over the past three years. Before I begin, I want to apologize to Brianna and Nicole and Haley and James and JR and Aaron and all of you other moot court superstars because I did not develop a concise roadmap for this speech. Yeah, that scares you. My general plan is to give you five compliments and then follow that up with a very short presentation of 10 pieces of advice that I stole from other people. Compliment number one, class of 2022, you have remarkable powers of concentration, determination, and resilience. Here's a noteworthy fact. You are the first graduating class in the history of our law school not to have experienced a single uninterrupted year of normal classes. COVID arrived in March of 2020 to rudely interrupt your first year and send you home to fight with the rest of the world over Lysol and Clorox and hand sanitizer and toilet paper. With few exceptions, your entire second year was spent online. This final year, you made it back to the classroom, but mostly, only while half of your face was covered with a mask. Through it all, you kept up with massive reading assignments, frequent quizzes, lots of papers, and lots of exams. You wrote law review pieces. You participated in moot court competitions. The Student Bar Association continued, carried on with its work admirably. The world of Zoom became an integral part of your law school experience. Until I recently reviewed some of your Zoom classes, I never realized how much eating was going on during those classes. <laughs> Michelle, I was mesmerized by a Property 2 video in which you appeared to eat popcorn slowly and steadily and politely, for the better part of 75 minutes. <laughs> we all had a few Zoom bloopers along the way. At least one of you, who shall remain nameless, started undressing immediately after decedent's estates class, unaware that your camera and Zoom were capturing the moment. Don't worry. Nothing R-rated was exposed, and in any event, the video links are now unlisted. <laughs> Compliment two. Class of 2022, if cleanliness is next to godliness, then you're doing just fine. I'm happy to say, class, you did not stink. I thank you for this achievement. Because about 20 years ago, I taught a class that, on the whole, did stink. <laughs> the smell in the classroom became so bad that some students took to bring in, as we like to say in the South, took to bring in cans of air freshener and spraying it around themselves during the lecture. I finally had to send emails to a few students saying, please do not return to class until you've taken a good bath. So kudos to you, I never had to send a single one of you that email. There is a caveat here. Again, almost half of your time in law school was spent on Zoom. Zoom is feature laden, but it does not have a smell -a rama button. So I can't really tell how you smell during the Zoom classes. Compliment three, excuse me, I'm choked up. Y'all will be lucky if I make it through this without crying when I saw you parade in. Compliment three, class of 2022, you chose your loved ones wisely. 
Loved ones, if you have any doubts how important you are in the lives of these fine students, let me share this with you. In one of their elder law assignments, I have them write their imagined eulogy. Probably the most common thread I see in those eulogies is a sense of gratitude to you, their loved ones. As one student recently wrote in her eulogy, everything that was good in her, she owed to her parents. Isn't that the most wonderful, wonderful tribute? Class of 2022, you clearly chose your loved ones wisely because they helped make you the fine folks you are today. And for those of you class members who, who sadly lost someone dear to you while you were in law school, and a number of you did, I think somehow those dear souls are watching you today and they're smiling down and celebrating with you. Compliment four, you are great students and you are also great teachers. There was no semester in which some of your questions didn't send me back to the books. Lexi, Rachel, Alan, Gerald, Caitlin, both Caitlins. Actually, I could name all of you. The truth is your questions were sometimes incredibly irritating. <laughs> but that's only because they were so good they sent me back to the books. Like all good teachers, you were terrific at giving feedback both during and after class. Megan and Lupita, you sat close to the lectern. And when my lecture was clear as mud, I could count on you and your classmates to give me that much-deserved look that says, Huh? Erica, I depended on you and your classmates to be there after class gently to let me know that during the lecture, I had jumped from point A to point Z without bothering to cover the other 24 letters of the alphabet that you absolutely have to know to get from A to Z. Often you all trapped me with my own words. At the Elder Law Review session a few days ago, I told the class, I will answer any of your questions, but I will not tell you what is on the exam. Laishi, you know where this is headed. Without missing a beat, Tristan's hand shot up and said, please then, tell us precisely what is not on the exam. <laughs> Trapped again. Final compliment. Class of 2022, I compliment you in advance for studying like you've never studied before over the next few weeks as you prepare for the bar exam. If you happen to run into an unborn widow as you study property, take a photograph from me. I've always wanted to see what she looks like. If you encounter her much older sister, a fertile octogenarian, there's no need to tell her that you and thousands of other law students have been cursing her and her miraculous offspring for 200 years. And of course, you do know what to do if a subdivision neighbor wants to have an erection that violates the restrictive covenants. <laughs> I'm sure you won't forget the potential inheritance problems that can arise when your clients go on a double date <laughs> and choose to use a recycled condom. You undoubtedly remember these and lots of other deep legal principles as well. But still, I compliment you in advance, again, for studying your heads off over the next few weeks. And now, quickly, 10 very short pieces of advice that I stole from other people. I've gussied them up and rearranged them a little bit, but I'll try to give attribution to the original source. Number one, be kind. Speaking to Syracuse graduates, George Saunders said, never forget the importance of kindness. Jeff Bezos echoed this sentiment when he spoke to graduates at Princeton. Number two, be willing to work hard 
at what you love. Shonda Rhimes, speaking at Dartmouth, told graduates to ditch the dream. Be a doer, not a dreamer. I'm not sure I totally agree with that one. I think I would say dream big and work hard. Number three, be organized. I'll qualify that by saying be organized when it's important to be organized. Admiral McRaven, speaking to graduates at the University of Texas, famously said it begins by making your bed. I think commitment to a regimen can be very helpful, but I also like the advice that Nora Ephron gave to Wellesley graduates. Embrace the mess that is life. Number four, be flexible and roll with the punches. This is advice from graduation speeches given by Stephen Colbert at Northwestern and Will Ferrell given at USC. And by the way, Will Ferrell ended his speech with a song, and I'm not going to do that to you today. If you don't have everything all figured out right now, it's okay. No one, not a single one of us, knows what's coming next anyway. The important thing is to be flexible, be willing to improvise, and learn. Number five, be curious and never stop learning. John Stewart, speaking to graduates at William & Mary, noted that for most of you graduates, courses in the required curriculum category are over with. The rest of your life is a feast of electives. Choose wisely and keep learning. Number six, be persistent. Oprah Winfrey, Conan O'Brien, and many others have talked about this in graduation speeches. Adversity, rejection, and mistakes are going to come your way no matter how you try to avoid them. Don't despair. Don't give up. Learn from them. Number seven, be forgiving. You may soon find out that much of what you've learned in law school is at odds with how things actually play out in the real world. You may even want to sue some of your law professors for teaching malpractice. Don't do it. Be forgiving. <laughs> Number eight, be constantly moving forward. I couldn't find this advice attributed to any specific graduation speaker, but it's particularly important to those of you graduates here today who might be afraid that you flunked one or more of your last set of finals. If you are concerned about that, then when you walk across that stage and receive your diploma, just remember to keep moving forward. There's an exit over here to the right. <laughs> just go right out that door. Don't look back. Change your phone number, change your address. Do not give the school the opportunity to reclaim that diploma. <laughs> number nine, be careful. Or in other words, be a reasonable, prudent person, at least most of the time. This again is graduation advice that I didn't find attributed to any specific graduation speaker. You've all seen those movies where at the end of graduation, the graduates throw their mortarboards into the sky, and then there's a freeze frame. And so those mortarboards seem to be held aloft in the sky forever and ever. Graduates, today do not throw your mortarboards into the air. There is no freeze frame in real life, and they can become dangerous flying objects. In the speech I originally wrote, I was going to say dangerous flying objects with pointy covers, but then you guys surprised me by getting the poofy hats. <laughs> if that hat, even with a poofy hat, if it falls back down to earth and hits somebody, you may find your first case as a law school graduate to be you as a defendant against a personal injury claim. And finally, number 10, be who you are. Speaking at Stanford in 2005, 
Steve Jobs, who was dying of cancer at the time, said, don't let the opinions of other people drown out your own inner voice. Your time on earth is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. L. Woods, who spoke at her Harvard Law School graduation <laughs> in Legally Blonde, said it this way, have faith in yourself. To emphasize this last piece of advice, I'll share the wisdom of Nelson Mandela. There is no passion to be found in playing small in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. In conclusion, the magic words you've been waiting for, in conclusion, class of 2022, today you do indeed stand on an infinite horizon. Unlimited opportunities and adventures lie ahead of you. You can do anything. You can be anything. I honestly believe that. As you step into your tomorrows, we know that you will continue to work hard, that you will speak and you will be heard, and that you will seek what is right and what is true. And so we all look forward to watching you go out and change the world for better. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you, Professor Brazier, for your inspirational words, and more importantly, for over three decades of dedicated service to our students. To memorialize this occasion, I would like to present you with a small gift on behalf of the Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law and especially the graduating class. Small box. Smaller, small box. Before Dr. Hargrave confers your degrees, I want to take a few minutes to reflect on the class of 2022. Most of you arrived in downtown Memphis in August 2019 to fulfill a lifelong dream. Little did any of us know that our world would be turned upside down by a global pandemic, racial injustice, and a social justice movement, an eviction crisis, and a war in Europe. The world you have prepared to lead has changed dramatically since you began your studies, but the need for lawyers to make sense of the chaos, to right wrongs, and to champion the rule of law has only grown exponentially. Three years ago, you committed to putting in the hard work needed to join a profession that would enable you to advocate for others and effect positive change. You arrived at orientation believing that you knew how to read and write, but we spent many hours that first week teaching you how to read and to write. <laughs> you likely realized quickly just how much effort was required to meet the high standards set by your professors. The Memphis Law faculty challenged you for better research, deeper analysis, and exacting writing. We have worked very hard to prepare you for the unforgiving demands of your clients, judges, and partners. We have endeavored to teach and model the professionalism we are confident you will exercise in your practice. Ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to report that these students have satisfied the very high standards of the School of Law. The fact that they are graduating today is proof not only of their high aptitude, but also of their hard work, their perseverance, and their commitment to improving society. It is evidence of their ability and fitness to fulfill the heavy obligations that the legal profession places on its members, and of their capacity to serve their clients, their communities, and the public with honor and distinction. The graduates here have made great sacrifices to arrive at this day. 
but they did not do so alone. Their families and friends, parents, grandparents, children, siblings, other relatives, loved ones, and friends have provided material, moral, and emotional support during their years in law school. In fact, the amazing father-daughter team of DeMarcus and Bethany Davis even undertook <laughs> DeMarcus and Bethany Davis even undertook the challenge of law school together and will hood each other in a few minutes. On behalf of the Cecil C. Humphrey School of Law and the University of Memphis, I would like to express our deep gratitude to all the families and friends for our soon-to-be graduates, those who could be with us today and those who could not. They have much to be proud of. To the class of 2022, you have gained tremendous knowledge and developed the skills necessary to serve the legal community and society at large. You are now empowered to live out the dreams that drew you to law school originally. You hold the tools necessary to serve those in society who seek your assistance to achieve justice. It is a tremendous responsibility, and I hope it will always inspire you to give back to those who need your help. We're proud of you. Congratulations to each and every one of you. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Bill Hargrave, President of the University of Memphis. All right, will all the candidates for the Juris Doctor degree please stand? Upon certification by the Cecil C. Humphreys School of Law that you have fulfilled all the requirements for graduation and by the authority vested in me by the University of Memphis Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you the degree to which you are entitled with all the rights, privileges, and obligations thereunto pertaining. We now take great pleasure in presenting you with the academic hood for the Juris Doctor degree as evidence of your accomplishments. Congratulations. Please be seated. You ready? This is the fun part. Will the first row of graduates please stand and come forward? Madison Taylor Albertson. Kaylee Elizabeth Angus. Ava Atar. Trevor A. Auerbach. <laughs> Dylan R. Banalis.
Mitchell Alexander Baser. Makia Lay Mahini Bayoni. Aaron Louise Blake. Marin Blakely. Nicole D. Blanchard. Bethany A. Bork. James Nicholas Bowers. DeAndre Javon Bradley. Thank you. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Gerald E. Bradner, Jr. James Holden Branscombe. Mark Andrew Bull. Alexander R. Bunn. Sarah M. Burns. Brianna Julia Butler. <laughs> Mary Michelle Childs. Caitlin Clendenin. John David Coates. Dardanius Lugarit Coleman.
Davis Welch Crocker. Rachel Ann Curry. Sorrell Elise Daddle, hooded, hooded by her aunt, Audrey Daddle, Belvin, class of 2000. Flawless. <laughs> Bethany Candace Davis, hooded by her father. Hooded by her father, Demarcus Davis, also of the class of 2022. That was a hard study group to get in. Carissa M. Davis. Demarcus C. Davis, hooded by his daughter, hooded by his daughter Bethany Davis, class of 2022. Jason Lee Day. Julia Catherine Denton. Gabrielle Alexis Duffy. James Baldwin Duncan. Thank you. Allison M. Edwards. Kate Lynn Ernst. Candace Danielle Fong. Umisha Frenche Forrest. William Thomas Jebo. Charles Carlton Jarrell.
Luke Nicholas Gibson. Victoria Lynn Galu Galu Galuli, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Victoria. Margaret E. Goodwill. Isabella Marie Goza. I'm sorry, hooded by her stepfather, John C. Ryland, class of 1994. Caitlin H. Grace. Renee Ambrosick Graves. <laughs> Caleb F. Hand. Lexi Justice Harrelson. Cole Lee Harrell Morris. Harrison Height. Maya Rochelle Hill. <laughs> Catherine Lacey Hodum. Brendan Gregory Horton. Danielle Youssef Husseini. John Nathan Wynn. <laughs> Caitlin E. Jackson, hooded by her brother Clayton Jackson, class of 2019. Alexis Janae Johnson. <laughs> Takesha LaSherelle Johnson.
They're a little rowdier than my class. <laughs> Christopher D. Jones. <laughs> Ellen Catherine Canavis. Spencer Frederick Cole. Judon Cabetta. Emma Crawford Kent. <laughs> Jacob London. Nola Gwendolyn Madison. <laughs> Tara Martin. Lupita. Valenzuela Martinez. <laughs> Rachel McAllister. Marshall Cole McComas. <laughs> Ian Patrick McCord. Sarah Catherine McKinney. Alexander P. McWhorter. Paul D. Messenger. <laughs> Megan Mosheri. <laughs> Zachary Kaufman Monroe. Put it by his mother, Marty Lee Kaufman, class of 1985, and by his father, William Martin Monroe, class of 1976. Jusiria Unisa Muhammad. <laughs> Jennifer Renee Myers.
Crystal Wynn. Andrew Eugene O'Donnell. <laughs> Liam Joseph O'Donnell. <laughs> Colby J.S. Owens. Mega Prukasha Putel. <laughs> Laisha Shade Peoples Pierce. <laughs> Brooks. Christopher Phelan. Tristan N. Pickle. Sola Playco. <laughs> Emma Louise Poindexter. <laughs> Jack Anthony Pullis. David Riddick. Raina Christian Rochelle. Jeffrey Charles Rogers. <laughs> Shamim Tate Ruhani. Aaron Michael Romanowski. <laughs> Nora Sarsour Ishmael. I'm going to congratulate myself after I get this one right. Sina Satyashpur. <laughs> Kelly Grayson Shelton. Tess Nicole Shelton. Yeah. 
Andrew William Shorten. Alan Martin Sisson, put it by his father, Jerry Allen Sisson, class of 1980. <laughs> William Quinn Smith. Regina Ladadio Solden. <laughs> Michael Bennett Southard. Nina Natalia Shumashek. She handed me her card and said, no pressure. <laughs> Raina D. Todd. Haley Victoria Townsend, put it by her fiance, William Wesley Fox, class of 2014. <laughs> William E. Underwood, put it by Joseph B. Underwood, Class of 2010. <laughs> Elisha M. Unteed. London Grace Vaughn. <laughs> Erica M. Webster. Arthur, Arthur White. <laughs> Lee William Wright. Micah Airy Young. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 2022 graduating class of the University of Memphis Cecil H C. Humphreys School of Law.
Congratulations, graduates. You can now switch your tassels to the other side of your cap. And thank you to Mr. Brundick, who has been an enthusiastic, unflagging, and extremely effective advocate for our law school for many years. We are very grateful for his service and the support of the Law Alumni Chapter. The class of 2022 has selected Dardanius L. Coleman, Jr., known as JR, to address you all today. Please join me in welcoming your classmate, Mr. Coleman, to the podium. Good evening to all of our parents, grandparents, family, and friends, to all administrators and staff, to our alumni, and finally, to my classmates. No, no, let me, let me correct myself. Good evening to our new graduates, our new doctors of jurisprudence, soon to be counselors of law and advocates of our century. As I stand here and look at you all, I can't help but think back to three years ago when we first started together as uncertain one else. And I think back to the first semester of school where in torts we're beginning to learn the elements of a battery um, and in contracts, how we're learning how mutual assent consists of an offer plus an acceptance, or even in property, and I can only speak for myself, pretending to understand the rules against perpetuities. Now, I look at us, and I see individuals who now hold power. Our degree is power. To be in our position is quite a powerful posture. Soon you will speak and justice will spill from your lips. You will write, and injustice will cripple as ink spreads to paper, and you will type, and the tips of your fingers will give rise to joy. The knowledge that you hold is sharp as that of a double-edged sword, and such knowledge will pierce into this world filled with much oppression, and it will cut deep into the marrow of injustice. Helplessness is a terrible feeling. It strips one of security. It debilitates one's sense of freedom. Helplessness laughs as it leaves you with a hollow chest. However, and how exceedingly joyful it is that I can say, however, that there are those in our world whose job it is to extend hope. And we are of those individuals. Today marks you for life as a helper. And such cannot be minimized because the need of help is what connects us all. From the moment that we entered this world as infants, we were crying. We wept and we extended our arms out, hopeful that someone would come and comfort us. This is because we did not have the ability to comfort ourselves. Instead, we were helpless. We longed for guidance. We expected love. And though we knew not of this world, we sought out hope. And what an extraordinary thing that help is. As we climbed the uphill battle of law school, we all needed support and help from others. And for me, my helper was and is Jesus Christ. He is the only reason that I stand on this stage today. Every day he wakes me up. Every day he gives me hope. Every day he sustains me and has plans to give me an eternal home with him. There is not a hair on my head that he doesn't know of. He gives me a reason to smile when at times I feel as if there isn't one. And if that is not help, then I don't know what is. And for others, that help may come from family and friends who encouraged and uplifted you, who rooted for you and was a source that put a smile on your face during times of self-doubt. For some of you, it was you yourself. The will within you helped you to get to this very moment. You see, during the most grueling times of our lives, we seek out help so that our minds can rest easy. And I say all of this because we are the help that individuals will seek during some of the most difficult 
and joyous times in their lives. We will be the crutch that many will lean on as we provide that help. Often when I think of what it means to help others, I think back to the short story many may be familiar with called The Little Engine That Could. But if you're not familiar with it, it goes like this. A little steam engine had a long train of cars to pull. She went along very well till she came to a steep hill. But then no matter how hard she tried, she could not move the long train of cars. She pulled and she pulled and she puffed and she buffed. She backed and started off again, but no, the cars would not go uphill. At last, she left the train and started up the track alone. alone. And do you think she had stopped working? No, indeed, she was going for help. Surely I can find someone to help me, she thought. Over the hill and up the track went the little steam engine, and pretty soon she saw a big steam engine standing on a side track. He looked very big and strong, and running alongside, she looked up and said, will you help me over the hill with my train of cars? It is so long and so heavy that I can't possibly get it over. And the big steam engine looked down at the little steam engine, and he said, don't you see that I am through my day's work? I have been rubbed and scoured, ready for my next run. No, I cannot help you. And the little steam engine was sorry, but she went on. And soon she came to a second big steam engine standing on a side track. And he was puffing and puffing as if he were tired. That big steam engine may help me, thought the little steam engine. And she ran alongside and asked, will you help me bring my train of cars over the hill? It is so long and so heavy that I can't possibly get it over. And the second big steam engine answered, I have just come in from a long, long run. Don't you see how tired I am? Can't you get some other engine to help you this time? I'll try, said the little steam engine, and off she went. And after a while, she came to a little steam engine just like herself. She ran alongside and said, will you help me get over the hill with my train of cars? It is so long and so heavy that I can't get it over. Yes, indeed, said this little steam engine. I'll be glad to help you if I can. So the little steam engine started back to where the train of cars had been standing, and both the little steam engine went to the head of the train, one behind the other, puffing and puffing and chugging and chugging, and off they started, and slowly the cars began to move. Slowly they climbed up the steep hill, and as they climbed, each little steam engine began to sing, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And they did. And very soon they were over the hill and going down the other side. And now they were on the plane again. And the little steam engine could pull her train herself. So she thanked the little steam engine who had come to her help and said goodbye. And she went merrily on her way singing, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could. You see, the little steam engine that could reminds me of ourselves a lot while in law school. Many will deny you. Many will say no, but if you keep searching, there is always someone that will help you. But now we should be the ones always willing to help others. Through God's grace and his mercy, I went from saying so many times, I think I can, I think I can, to I know I can, I know I can. That should be the tune that we all repeat. We are now sitting with our robes on and our hoods on, and soon to, well, we, we, we do have our hoods on, rather, and it is no longer us saying that I think I will make it through. At this moment, we know we have made it through, and indeed, as I look at this crowd now, I must say, we did it. I challenge you all to always be like the little steam engine that offered their help, with our degree, we are now certified helpers. So I urge you all to be the beacons of light to individuals that need your help, a city on a hill that cannot be missed, a help to one that seeks you out. And with that, I say congratulations to the class of 2022. Thank you, JR. And now back to our graduates. This is your day. 
For most of you, this is the last day of your school life after two decades or more of schooling. This is truly a day of tremendous accomplishments, but all of us assemble here today, your teachers, your families, and your friends, know that many more, even greater accomplishments are sure to follow. Congratulations again. As we send you off, we want to remind you that your relationship with the law school and the university does not end today. You will be tigers forever. And your accomplishments will bring honor to your law school and pride to our students, faculty, and alumni. Stay in touch. In turn, we will stay in touch with you and do our best to help and guide you whenever we can throughout your careers. Let me conclude this evening by expressing my great appreciation for some key members of our staff, in particular, Assistant Dean Meredith Aiden, who organized today's events. I also want to thank Carol Landers, Stephanie Hope, Keisha Anderson, Vanessa Muldrow, Ruth Lockard, Assistant Dean Sue Ann McClellan, Assistant Dean Elizabeth Rudolph, and all of our student volunteers who assisted offstage in these commencement ceremonies. Also, thank you to the Bluff City String Quartet for the music they provided for today's ceremony. Please jo join in giving them all a round of applause. I ask that you all remain seated during the recessional as the platform party, the faculty, and the graduates exit. Thank you and good evening. <laughs> Thank you. 